Okay, this is impromptu. I've seen a lot of Matt Frazier. I don't remember this one, but just for the heck of it, let's pull it up. This is a audio that was recorded at one of his events in Los Angeles, September 2019, 2019. Okay. Matt Frazier is extremely glib. He's really charismatic. He's got a lot of personality. He's got so much energy. He is, um, he does the events where um, all seats are good. So you've got people sitting this way, people sitting this way, people sitting this way, people sitting this way, and he walks amongst them and he's just pulls people up and he does his thing. So all seats are good. It's like a giant cross, like an X. And one of the things that Matt does, and this is audio that I'm going to play for you. One of the things he does, um, he's one of the best cold readers I've ever seen. But what he does is, now this is a visual thing for you, and I don't have a drawing in front of me, but I want you to picture this, all right? So are you watching? So hopefully I can get this over to you guys. So there's a group of 10 people. He'll say, I want this row to stand up. So 10 people stand up. So imagine 10 people standing in front of you right now. You are Matt Frazier. I'm Matt Frazier. And there's 10 people standing right here. So what he'll do is he'll say some kind of thing. Like he'll say, who was in the burning building? Or who had um, a miscarriage that, or who had the book, the, you know, he starts to tell us little throwing out thing. Now, if he's standing here like this and he starts to raise his hand and he says the statement, let's say, who was caught in a burning building? And he starts to raise his hand and you can watch this. Of course, you can't watch it on the audio, but I've seen it. He starts to raise his hand and there's 10 people in front of me. He's looking to see which of those people it makes a reaction to. If, a, if somebody in the row of 10 which is far apart. I mean, these are chairs, 10 chairs. If somebody in the in one of those 10 chairs goes, oh, well, then he wants to point to them. Like, I'm getting it from you. Ah, I'm getting it from you. You have, they're telling me that you have, you relate to that burning building. Okay, right? Now, watch my hand. I'm pulling it up. I'm saying, who was it? I'm getting something about somebody being caught in a burning building. Now watch my hand and I'm going like this to which of the 10. You see, I'm giving it away. I am not going to be able to go right to that person easily. But if, let me get way over here in the corner. You guys can visualize this. If I'm right here and the 10 people are at an angle to me. So I'm looking at them at a 45 degree angle and they're all there. When I lift my hand to say the same story, it looks at the angle they're at. You can't tell which person I'm pointing to because all 10 of them are here. They're all at an angle. This is a really bad way to explain it to you because I should have had something drawn out for you. But this is kind of one of his things because if he stands at an angle and has 10 people stand up and then when he says, I'm getting something about somebody being caught in a burning building and he lifts his hand, he's it automatically looks like he's pointing to any of those 10 people. His finger doesn't have to move very far because of the angle. Try this at home because I'm just doing a very bad visualizing it. So when he has people stand up, he'll say, I want the whole row of 10 to stand up. He doesn't stand them in front of him like this. He stands off to the 45 degree angle to them. And he does it every time. And you can watch this. At least every time I've ever seen. And that's why, because when he's looking at their faces to see who he's going to be drawn to, he's drawn to them because they had a reaction. If they're all like, but if there's somebody standing behind or sitting behind in the row behind that goes oh, like this, then he's going to say, oh, I'm drawn to, it's not your row. It's the row behind you. That lady right there. That's the one who I'm drawn to. Hey, you guys get this? That's how it works. Let's listen to a little bit of this. I haven't listened to this in years. So I don't know what we're going to see. But let's let's listen. Again, this is unfiltered, unedited Matt Frazier. September 2019, Los Angeles. I'm not showing anybody's faces, but I will show you what it looks like where he's standing here. And you can listen to him talk. 
instead of looking at my face. All right. I've blurred out all the I have the parties as well. Yeah. Can you all stand up? Oh boy, I got a couple different souls that are stepping forward over here. And it's funny, because when I come over, they all try to get, get my attention, like I'm the freaking operator on the other side. So know that this is your dad's way of acknowledging that he's here. The moment I'm connecting with him, I just felt my legs go out, which is his way of acknowledging there was leg issues before his departure. Do you see that? Because when I'm connecting with him, he just said to me, I don't want to be in that wheelchair, which is his way of acknowledging that even though he couldn't walk or move, that it's his way of, of letting you know that on the other side that he can move, now move fine because he's running up and down with me when I'm connecting with him. Do you understand that? And he says to me when I'm speaking to him, he says, you need to let her know that more importantly, that I was not losing my mind at the end because he's acknowledging that. So did you think he was losing his mind? or Because he's bringing that up when I'm speaking to him. And your father's telling me, because listen, I was a shop as attack here in the physical world. He says, and I wanted to have my independence. He says, and I wanted to be able to live as, as long as I could on my own, because he's acknowledging that. And one of the hardest things was when, he, when his body went out here in the physical. He just talked about the infection. Where was the infection that happened? He had um, colon cancer. He had Can you put that, that microphone up? <laughs> yeah. Do I make you nervous? <laughs> Picture me naked, it goes away. <laughs> I don't know why people come and they're nervous. I, mean, I should be nervous. I'm the one who wants to hear them. He had colon cancer. So. But your dad also tells me when I'm connecting with him. I felt my stomach blowing up when I'm connecting. Mm -hmm. And I felt right, be yeah. right before he passed, I felt there was a, a bloat or a big issue went through here. And I felt like I passed, had sepsis, so there was sepsis that was going on. Oh, okay. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Because when I'm connecting with him, he's showing me that when I'm speaking to him, which is his way of letting me know. And let okay, so there's a lot there. Let's, let's, let's pause for a second. I'm starting to remember which reading this one was. So this is, a, again, this is a woman who stands up and he goes to her and she is of an age that it looks like her father would be dead or very likely. Um, it's, it's, he, he's, a, he's a fast talker. And so they don't really get to get a lot of information in there. He just keeps talking and he's just relying on whatever he can feedback wise if they're, he's on the right track. But remember that the person who's getting the reading has been chosen out of this room of several hundred people or whatever it is. And the, the odds of that are really high that she's going to get a reading because he's only going to do maybe 20 readings in this whole room, something like that. It's a two hour event. And he, he is called on her. So she's, She's nervous. She's upset. She's ready to talk to her dad or whoever he wants to connect to. And so they're going to do motivated listening. <laughs> Sorry. These sitters do motivated listening. What they're trying to do is they're trying to hold on <laughs> to that connection. So Matt's in connection with somebody on my side of the family. So he's going to do what he's going to do is try to get hold on to it. She's going to give a little bit. She's going to help a little bit. She's going to make excuses for it because we all know they've all been taught that it's a, it's a tenuous thing. So what's going to happen is she's going to make allowances for whatever he says to hold on to him because otherwise he's going to, if she gives too many no's or if she gives like, I don't know, he's going to go to the person behind her, the person beside her or somebody on the other side of the room. And it's going to be her readings over like that. So Matt's making a lot of excuses. I'm uh, not excuses, but he's giving a lot of glowing things of somebody who's at the end of their life, what they would expect. He's saying, I want, um, of course, a person is a, uh, a man who's made it to his seventies or eighties before he dies, wishes he wasn't needing to use a wheelchair. He wishes he didn't have to um, die at a facility. He wants to be energetic. These are all platitudes of things that you want to be true. So let's look at, the, let's, let's go back over here again. It, like I said, it happens really fast to, to people. Sepsis, so there was sepsis that was going on. Oh, okay. Did you know that? No, I did not. Because when I'm connecting with him, he's showing me that when I'm speaking to him, which is his way of letting me know and letting you know mm -hmm. 
that he knew that he wasn't going to make it here in the physical world, even though he was fighting and going through this here in this world. Because when I'm connecting with him, he says, the first thing you need to let her know, he says, that I look so good on the other side. Because he's like, oh, and his hands are in, he's all dressed up, and this is how you remember him. And he's got all that, like, did he wear Old Spice here in this world? All I keep smelling is, like, Old Spice. He wore something. Because <laughs> I smell you, father. And listen, the same way that I'm connecting with your loved ones is the same way that they'll connect with you. So if all of a sudden you go and you start smelling things, whether it be, you know, um, your dad's cologne or his aftershave, know that that's his way of acknowledging that he's there and that he's with you. Um, he's all Okay, Old Spice, hands up everybody out there who have a family member who used Old Spice. That was the number one cologne out there for men. For many generations, the generation this woman would be. This is really like a common thing. It um, One of the Chip Coffee events I went to, the guy, uh, Chip's Coffee says, uh, I'm seeing a bottle of Vicks Vapor Rub. <laughs> and the guy that he's talking to starts crying. And I thought, who in this room doesn't have an experience with Vicks Vapor Rub? We lived it. I mean, we had, you'd open a cabinet and there would be bottles of Vicks Vapor Rub, one by your bed, one over here. Same with Old Spice. So he's, so what Matt is trying to say right now is that if you smell something, it's from your father or from whoever it is who's passed, who's trying to get, oh my gosh, it's just the nonsense, the nonsense. And did you notice she didn't know anything about sepsis. Matt trained um, as an EMT. So he knows medical stuff. He knows some. Also, he's talking about um, Old Spice. And the woman said, and he says, she he wore Old Spice. And she says, well, he wore something. And he just skips it and just goes past it. In other words, no, I don't know. And he just goes right past it and moves on to one of his glib little things he says. Okay. I If it's the one I'm thinking of, the reading that I'm thinking of, I think we're going to get into some more interesting stuff real quick here. I was talking about the dogs that had passed as well. No. He's got dogs that are with him. Oh. And where was the German Shepherds? It was, yeah. Perfect. He says, no, the dogs are here. Because your dad's more excited that he's he's not even excited to make it to heaven. He's more excited that these freaking dogs are here and with them. Because he's like, look, I got my dogs here. And the dogs are running up. And he's so excited about that. Do you understand that? Yes. So know that those two souls are on the other side because it's your dad's, your, it's your dad's way of acknowledging that they're there and that they're with him. Okay. He says, I want you to know that I'm the one who's watching over you. And I'm... Okay, I'm going to replay this because I want you to hear this about the dogs. This is really important. Listen to the exact words he says about the dogs. Listen. Um, he's also talking about the dogs that had passed as well. He's got dogs that are with him. And where was the German Shepherds? It was, yeah. Perfect. He says, no, the dogs are here. Because your dad's more excited than... Okay. What is it about the dogs that are here? Who does not have some relationship with dogs? The man made it into his, you know, later years. He died of colon cancer as an older man, you know, 60, 70, 80 years old. And he's had some relationship to dogs. One more time. Then he says. He's got dogs that are with him. And where was the German Shepherds? It was, yeah. What was it with the German shepherds? That is not connected to the two dogs that are over there with him. It's these two dogs. I'm getting two dogs. And she's like, uh-huh. And he says, what's it with the German shepherds? Totally different. It does not have to be the same. This is wordplay. And Matt Frazier's really good at wordplay. So what he's saying is something about dogs. Okay. Of course, that's a hit. What's this about the German shepherds? That does not mean that they belong to the dad. That does not mean anything of the sort. He's saying, what about the German shepherds? Number one dog breed. Well, one of the top dog breeds for a long time, except during the World War II, was German shepherds. It still is an extremely popular 
a very common uh, breed. And so Matt's not going to this breed of dog because he's getting a he's getting the feeling of German Shepherds. He's going there because he's playing the odds. The odds are more likely to get a hit from German Shepherds. But again, he's not saying the dogs belong to him. They could have been the neighbor's dogs. It could have been the woman who's talking to his dogs. It could have been her son's dogs. It could have been dogs that scared him when he was a child. It could have been uh, he trained dogs. Maybe he knew dogs that were German Shepherds. It, but she makes a tentative response. She says, yeah, they they were his, but very like, I'm not sure. Remember, I'm telling you that the sitters got a motivated reason to hold on to it. And if she says, I don't know what you're talking about, they were chihuahuas, um, then he would, he would move. He'd say, oh, I must not be talking to your dad. Maybe I'm talking to this lady person over here and move on. She knows that. She's watching him do that with the audience. And so maybe her dad had big dogs. Maybe they were a mix and they could have been German Shepherds. And maybe Matt's just getting it confused. And that's why she'll go and say, yes, I guess if it's my dad, I'll play it one more time, just that little bit. And then we're going to just continue. So listen in. Just hopefully I go back far enough. That way of acknowledging that he's there and that he's with you. Um, he's also talking about the dogs that had passed as well. He's got dogs that are with him. And where was the German Shepherds? In, yeah. mm -hmm. Perfect. He says, no, the dogs are here. But your dad's more excited. That he's, he's not even excited to make it into heaven. He's more excited that these freaking dogs are here and with them. <laughs> yeah, the dogs are running off. And he's so excited about that. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So know that those two souls are on the other side because it's your dad's your it's your dad's way of acknowledging that they're there and that they're with you. He says, I want you to know that I'm the one who's watching over you and I'm the one who's there because you feel a presence in your house and you feel a soul that's there. And you're like, who the hell is this? He goes, No, that's me. He says, I'm the one who's watching you. I'm the one who's in the house. <laughs> now what's his way of bringing that through? Because I want you to know that I am okay, and more importantly, that by me coming through, it means that I am still your father on the other side, and I still watch over you every day. He says, "Don't know that when you know that when you feel me, or you sense me, it's okay to talk to me." He says, "Because I'm right there, I am by your side. Know that the dogs are here, and that they're safe and at peace with me." Because these dogs are like his kids when I'm connecting with him, and you're gonna know that this goes for us all. Is that when we lose animals here in the physical world, they go back with our loved ones on the other side. You should think. Platitude, 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 right? I, it's it's so hard to watch this. I don't even know if I want to watch anymore. So people, he's not talking to the dead. He's just very glib and he's making a fortune off of it. This room is full. They're paid. I think we paid, gosh, what did we pay? 40, 50 bucks to get in. You got a room of people. How much is that? That's a lot of money, isn't it? He's rented out the Hyatt in LA. I'm sure that was not cheap. So let's say $40 a person and he's got 200 people there. So that's $8,000 just for that. Plus he's going to sell books afterwards and autograph them. That's, let's say he's got 100 people there at, at um, what is it charged? $20 a share. I mean, so it just adds up. So we're at $10,000 and then more and more. It's, it was him, his fiance, some volunteer kind of woman who looked like she was kind of somebody in the LA area. And I think his manager was there. So it's four people. I think he's paying two of them. Well, no, he's paying his, well, it's not paying for his girlfriend except for his, her flight. Um, and his manager's getting a cut. I'm sure they're making quite a bit of money for this event. You know what? Now they think about it. I think I ran the numbers before. And I think I, was, I figured it out to be about $13,000 they make um, just to do this. I don't know how much they're paying out to the Hyatt for, for a two-hour um, gig. But it was, um, I, 
I figured, I think it was $13,000 when I figured this out because we went through and we were kind of counting the people in the room and figuring out what the average price was. And then we were looking at how long the line was for the books and how much those cost. It's, this is this is a business. This is a business. And he's pretty darn good at this uh, cold reading stuff. So I hope you like this. It was kind of an impromptu fun. Let's just throw it in there kind of a bit but uh, that's unedited and you can see how the emotions are high for these people and you can feel how how the desire is really for the woman to try really hard to hold on to that reading as long as she can and she's more willing to agree to it really it wasn't much it was just dad's watching over you he says a bunch of funny things that that are i bet if you go to enough of his events you'll hear him say the same things over and over again all right. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe. Please give me your comments in the in the notes at the bottom underneath. Please share and please like my video and please subscribe. Thanks.